Welcome to our first ever live Facebook video and I must admit it's much easier speaking to audiences than to a square photo um, camera screen. Welcome, I hope you all are great. Welcome to all the family and friends that I haven't seen for five days. I hope you all are marvelous and the reason for this Facebook video is to keep you all inspired and also to share some ideas of what can be done while you're at home with your children. And I want to thank Kaylee. Us girls don't give away our ages, but she's my daughter. And she's the videographer for this Facebook video. It's our first time. So you are welcome to send us suggestions, anything that we can better. Um, we are going to give it our best to have you inspired and to have you painting in this time of lockdown. I hope everybody is safe. And then we've decided, so initially the plan was to have it in my garage. I've literally spent an entire day to get it fixed and beautiful. And then this morning we realized that the Wi-Fi reception there isn't what it's supposed to be. So now in my house, welcome in our house with my people, our pets. You must, might most probably meet Maestro later, our dog. It's quite mischievous. What we've decided to show you, we all most probably have milk cartons in our house. And I'm going to inspire you, share some ideas of what you can do even with your children um, while you need to keep them busy. So just to give you some of the things I've heard over these past few days, Fricky is working with us and Fricky has got two daughters, five and two years old, Mia May and Lilies, and him and his wife went outside to have a cup of coffee and Mia May was crying like crazy, she's five years old, and Yaku, um, we call him at we call him Fricky at the office because there, there's too many Yakus and we get confused. And Fricky went and he said, Mia May, what is your problem? Why are you crying like this? And she said, Daddy, the head president of the country said no one's allowed outside. Now, of course, the with present van die lampie gesê, niemand mag buiten wees. So um, I hope you all listen to the head president of the country and stay indoors. Back to the milk garden. We are going to create either a flower pot. Seeing that the milk garden keeps water inside, you can put soil in there and water it, or you can just fill it with, with a little bit of water and succulents will grow inside. I'm first going to cut it. This is the hardest part. So I'm cutting it and you can do different sizes and different shapes as well. You can stash them as a quite a set. Then I'm going to clean my milk carton with lacquer thinners. I'm putting on a glove and I'm opening lacquer thinners. Now this is the part that's crucial before starting to use chocolate paint. Your surface needs to be clean and grease free and what the thinness does, it etches the surface so that the paint can grip onto the surface. So I take my cloth, my thinnest cloth, and I clean my carton. Some of the milk cartons, um, the ink actually just stays there and others you remove the ink completely. So if the ink remains there, you haven't done anything wrong because I've worked with a few brands um, yesterday in the preparation. I clean it. Okay, now this step will apply when painting onto laminate surfaces, when painting onto wall tiles, when painting onto previously varnished surfaces. Very important before painting onto any varnished surface is to allow the varnish to cure for at least six months. Um, so this is the most crucial step 
have no turpentine, no sugar soap. There's some leftover milk. It needs to be lacquer thinners. I clean it properly and I let the milk carton stand for 20 to 40 minutes for the thinners to evaporate. And then, just put this one away, don't smell it, close the bottle. Remove the glove. And here I have one that's already been prepared and that's dry. Now I'm going to paint it. Now the three paint colors we are using today is Comfort's Blue, Gracious and Sweetness. Sweetness and Comfort's Blue are named after two employees in our factory. So to them, if you have the opportunity to look or look at the later stage, we are especially with you and your families in this time. And now I use a paintbrush and let's go with, I have one here that's already prepared. So let's use Gracious and then we'll do the stenciling work with the other colors. And what I do, I'll move closer to Kaylee, is I simply paint onto the milk carton. Now you will see Chocolate paint's consistency is creamy, smooth, and the application is easy. I love using Hamilton's brushes. Um, it's good quality, and the application is just beautiful. So I'll paint my first coat. Wait for the coat of paint to dry. And this is also a very important step. Always allow um, coats of paint to dry before you start, a paint, uh, start applying your second coat. So once this is on, I'm going to leave it there at the basin to dry. And then, sorry, okay, I'm just gonna move over here, don't worry. And then I'm going to apply my second coat and allow the second coat to dry. So here I have one that I've painted already and I've painted a second coat and now I'm going to start, allow my second coat to dry and now I'm going to start with a stencil work. I'm going to show you various techniques um, applicable to stencil work. Most important when doing stencil work, even though the detail on your stencil might be very small, the less paint you use, and I've said this so many times for those that haven't heard it before, the less paint you use, the greater the success. So I have various stencils. I'm going to use this one, and I'm just going to apply half of the heart shape. And for this small surface, I'm going to make use of a stencil brush. Now, a stencil brush has got short, hard bristles. I dip it in Comfort's Blue. I remove any excess. Newspaper can be used. This I found as the, on the backing of my stencils. And very little paint. So I'm pressing the stencil down with my free hand and very little paint. In circular movement, making sure that I touch everywhere. And if it's not perfect, it's also fine stencil work and it's a creative item. If you want it perfect, there's no reason why you wouldn't get it perfect following these st steps. And now I remove my stencil and there the stencil design is sitting. And now re let's repeat the same at the back with a different color. And let's use sweetness. Just see if I have another stencil brush. Let's use this color if there's a clean one. Else you can just clean that one, dry it well, and reuse it. And I remove any excess paint from my stencil brush. 
and we just make sure that both sides are pretty and you can also do like an ombre so i've started with sweetness and now i'll continue and maestro has joined us now i'll continue with comfort blue believe me it's better to give him freedom else he opens the doors and he jumps on them until he could open them or repeats his jumping until it's so annoying that you do open for him and now i'll remove and there is an ombre of pink and comforts blue sweetness and comforts blue okay now the best part is you won't believe this but i can sew i'm going to show you how to sew with something that you have in your house at this time and this is an old kitchen towel something that would soon be used as a scrub lappy but now i'm going to cut the section off and my team members from the office will be so proud of me because I'm not going to glue the fabric today, I'm going to staple it. Yes, that's how I'm, I do sewing. Let me show you how you sew with a staple. So I put this piece of the kitchen towel or hessian. On the other one I've used hessian on the inside. And I staple now there's no excuse to say that you can't sew so I keep it up straight and later I'll just fold it over and I've selected a kitchen towel with a line stripey design that I know I sew straight and this is so easy I've recently um, we did a shoot at the factory where we revamped a space into a dining room and we had curtains put up and then there was something wrong with the length and I said do not stress Fricky, just give me your glue. I can fix this. And it looks so professional. So this is where I stand, stood last in line. Is with needlework. Okay, and now we come to the end. And I take my scissors. And let's cut a piece off here. So I've cut a piece off there and I just tuck it in underneath, fold the kitchen towel over the edge of the milk carton box and there I'll just put another staple. And now it looks like a, like a lappy. On the inside and what I'm going to put in there are my book and knives <laughs> and there I have something unique beautiful DIY in my kitchen your children can even put their stationery in there and um, you can maybe on your patio do a selection of of different succulents you can be creative the next thing I'm going to show you is to how to upcycle a new, uh, an old breadboard looking like a new one. So I have, that's mine underneath. Let me just get it out. Okay, so here's an old breadboard that I'm going to make look new. So I've given this quite some thought. We're not going to paint it solid, 
We are just going to do stencil work on it and I'm concerned that when cleaning it with lacquer thinners and you will still be dishing up food on it, that the lacquer thinners will suck into the wood. Um, if you paint it solid, yes, then clean thorough, thoroughly with lacquer thinners, allow for it to dry and then paint. But when we only do stencil work and there's still some exposed wood, Bailey, can you focus in here on the breadboard, please? And there's still some exposed wood on the breadboard. Rather, sand the oily parts first, then wash with soap and water and allow to dry properly. And then we're going to stencil. What I've done on this breadboard, and I'll show you now, is I've stenciled with charcoal and then with stencil of Paris. What the stencil of Paris does, it gives some a raised effect on the surface. So when you're cutting, you're not actually cutting onto the surface. So it also gives some protection and it makes it looks, look beautiful. So I've already done the cleaning part. I'm now just going to stencil. When stenciling on larger flat surfaces, it's easier to use a foam roller. Now a foam roller, the size of a foam roller will depend on the size of your surface. Marcy is here to help. Usually he runs away with my paintbrushes and we need to tackle him to, to get it out of his mouth. So I'm going to use a 110 millimeter foam roller and I'm going to show you a tip on of how to apply the paint nicely evenly onto your foam roller. Also important is we're doing stencil work and the tip that I've mentioned right at the beginning the less paint, the greater the success. So let me show you. I'm going to paint with my Hamilton's brush, my Hamilton's roller. I'm going to paint some Comfort's Blue Choco Paint onto my foam roller. And this is now only when you do stencil work. The reason for this is you want an even distribution of paint onto your foam roller and then I'm going to use my carton let me just find it over here also that I had at the backing of my stencil and I just roll it out to make sure it's evenly distributed and there's not lumps of paint on my foam roller now this technique is, um, is something that I want to say thank you to Trudy from Pulakwane. I hope you're watching Trudy. She loves layering her stencils, different designs. She just do them one on top of the other and not, not worried what the stencil designs are. And not even doing the stencil work perfect, the less perfect it is, the more beautiful her stuff is. So this truly is inspiration I found from you, so thank you for that. And I'm putting my beautiful choco stencil. You can use anything you, you have in your house onto my surface. And now it's important to secure your stencil with masking tape. Okay, I don't see mine. I don't think it came from the garage, but I'm just going to hold it down. You use masking tape to secure your stencil to make sure it doesn't move while you do your stencil work. And now I can press hard because I know there's no paint that can leak or seep in underneath my stencil design. And it will still look stunning. A tip. If you've done this and you and you notice that there's unevenness in your stencil work, you can take a hundred grit sandpaper and lightly sand over the surface to create a more even effect and to hide all the mistakes. So that is a way of fixing stencil mistakes: is to wait for the paint to dry on your stencil work and then sand. I'm just adding some more so it can go faster. And then I'm going to show you how to do pattern repeats with stencil work. So make sure it's still in position. 
Fall down with my free hand. You have secured your stencil with masking tape. The nice thing of a foam roller is you can move in different directions. Rather work patiently. If you put too much paint on your stencil brush, it will leak in underneath. So I'm working patiently. You're getting the idea. I'm going to add some more. And Master is here to assist to see what he can steal. It's non-toxic, so charcoal is safe to use on, oh, look how stunning is that, on any pet accessories or in your nurseries. And now I'm going to repeat the pattern. So I place the stencil back exactly as it was. So I'm just moving it on until my pattern repeats. There. And I know it's perfect. This is a, you can feel I haven't been to the gym. But I'd rather spend time making sure it's done perfectly. And there it's done. Let's lift and reveal. How stunning is that? No leakages, no imperfections. It's just beautiful. The next step, okay, and you can zoom in here as well. Yes, on the bar stool, I did like a Moroccan inspired stencil design. So there it's also done. Um, I'll show you later. When the coast is clear. Now I'm going to add my stencil of Paris the stencil work on top of my existing stencil work in a different color and in a different stencil design. Let me show you how it's done. So this is what the stencil of Paris looks like. It sits rock hard a bottle of this covers more or less one square meter, depending on how thick you apply the stencil of Paris and how much detail is on your surface. I'm mixing on an old canvas and later I'll, not today, at a later stage, I'll show you how to upcycle canvases with some inspirational ideas. And now I'm going to add goodness gracious into my paint uh, into my stencil paste you don't need a lot so i'm just touching with my paintbrush on my canvas not too much paint you don't want the stencil paste to be too runny and i mix it into my paste I'll be also showing you how to do a pattern repeat with your stencil and the stencil of Paris space. I'm just going to add a drop more. At previous workshops, I said put your paint scraper a centimeter deep into your paint, remove excess, and then mix. That's still a plus, I still do it like that. I just don't want my face to be too runny and it's ready. Let me just clear everything in front of me. 
And now I'm going to scrape with my scraper from my canvas or it can be a paper plate, something disposable in your house. And I'm going to apply my coloured stencil paste onto my painted surface. So this, the drying time on the stencil of Paris depends on the climate. So if it's a hot summery day, one to two hours will be necessary um, for the paste to dry. And it also depends on how thick you the application is. Rainy, cloudy day, two to three hours coastal areas. Everything takes longer there to dry. So just if you press your fingernail into the paste and there's no mark left, you know that it's dry perfectly. So I make sure as I apply that I do the application nicely and evenly. There are questions like where can I get chocolate paint now? My paint is finished. What am I going to do? Unfortunately with the lockdown we are not allowed to trade but we are currently running and um, our website is open again. So if you order chocolate paint during the time of lockdown, we will deliver straight after lockdown. And with every order exceeding 500 rand, online order exceeding 500 rand, we will include a free 500 ml once lockdown is over. And chocolate paint is a job creation initiative for those who don't know. And our paint colours are named after people in the factory and even our own name. So every person has a colour named after him or her. Okay. So I'm just making sure everything is done nice and neatly. Tip. When you remove the stencil and you see any unevenness, maybe a bump standing up and you want it perfectly smooth, wait until it's dry, take a hundred grit sandpaper and just sand it smooth. And then later this week, I'll be showing you how to paint onto stencil work. So there is my board. And I'm removing my stencil and voila, look how fabulous this is. And the paste dries, mixed with paint, dries two shades darker once it's dry. I won't be able to complete it straight away because we need to wait for the paste to have set and dried a bit before we continue. But I just want to show you how to do the pattern repeat. So if this, once this is dry, you just move your stencil design forward, reapply it there where the pattern, you can see the pattern repeats. Let's do it. Who's afraid? Let's put it back on. And I'm just going to keep it there in the air. Quickly mix some more paste and paint. And now two breadboards in my house will look stunning and new and fresh and I don't need to hide them any longer. So I'm just lifting it up there where it can press. I'm spreading over there. Make sure it's done nice and evenly. This is something that you actually shouldn't do. There are no rules. Except for clean your surface properly with lack of thinness before you start. And I remove. A 
and it's done. These imperfections I will sand once the paste is completely dry just to get an even feel and finish. And these are the inspirations for today. Now, very important, remember our online store to support the jobs um, that we are responsible for. Please go and like, view, subscribe, all the things that you need to do on YouTube. We have a stunning YouTube channel with numerous videos and ideas that we share. That's amazing. Please, please go and subscribe there. Later this year, we will also be hosting um, live videos, tutorials and workshops on our YouTube channel where you can actually order the, th the material or the kit from your nearest stockist and you can paint with me during that time. We are going to have a questions and answers session on Thursday half past one live. So please, any questions that you have, any advice that you need, I'm going to be here, I'm going to be live and I'm going to be assisting with them. So Thursday this week, half past one, we are going live again. And then I want you to tell me what you would like to see. What techniques you need to improve? How can I assist? So send us on our Facebook page anything you would like to see me do in this time of lockdown. And I will, to the best of my ability, try to assist most or all of them, if possible. Then we are in the home magazine. This month, for those who can still get their home magazines, when you go buy your, your um, essentials. So, Toast is the Afrikaans version, Home is the English version. We were supposed to launch our new fabric and wallpaper range. Um, but due to lockdown, this all have now been postponed. But please go look there. Nice inspiration. Stencil work again. So if you follow the tips that I've given today, there we've painted on the locker, um, an old filing cabinet actually, with stencils. There we've painted onto faux leather, revamped, all painted, stunning idea to make a nice creative space in your house, use old paintings, chalk or them, and then you can use them as stools. We chalk out um, clipboards, and then remember chalk or is also a chalk board paint, any color you can write with chalk on it. I have an exciting thing that I'll show you in your bathroom sometime during this lockdown. Then we've upcycled plastic detergent bottles. With Choco, uh, one of our new colors is, is Terracotta and Matte Black. Fun DIY project, let your children paint all the plastic bottles. So with plastic, the following steps are important. Clean first with lacquer thinners. No, no, stop. Sand first. So you first sand plastic with 100 grit sandpaper. Then clean it with lacquer thinners. Allow for the thinners to dry and then you paint it onto plastic. But the sanding part on plastic is important because most plastic surfaces are covered with a oily coating. And there we showed how we applied our wallpaper. I'll give you more, more ideas and inspiration in my own house that I've done with our new wallpaper range behind the scenes. Okay? Deal. Then we are launching after this lockdown. We have a stunning new range of colors, something really exciting and new and fresh. Um, new stencil designs, new furniture decals. So lots of new things happening. I can't wait for lockdown to be over. I'm sure you as well. And then for April Fools. Yaku is not in the house at the moment. I have prepared Yaku a surprise for April Fools. I have chocolate these golf clubs in different shades of pinks. So to give you a behind the scenes look, this is what our holiday coral looks like. Okay, if you can look, zoom in there. So it's a warm coral pink color. And Serena's idea is a soft peach pink color. These are two of our new colors that we'll be launching soon. 
and then this one I'll be painting in one of our other new pink colors that we'll be launching pretty pink so I'll post them later when they're done thank you for logging in thank you for all our loyal supporters just know every time you are buying a jar of choco paint you are making a difference in someone else's life love you all keep safe and see you on thursday bye